Hi, today I want to tie one of my favorite patterns with you. It um, is a great emerger slash spent adult pattern. Um, particularly if they're hydropsyche around, I've got a size 16 scud hook and a dark charcoal bead, and I'm using some 80 brown uni. Just tie in behind that bead. I'm going to botch that a little bit, trim that out with our scissors, and start by tying in some amber colored Antron dubbing. The abdomen is dark brown. This is a shuck, so in the water with some light shining through it, it'd probably be a nice amber color. Bring my thread back to about halfway down the bend of the hook. And I like to trim this relatively short, no more than about an eighth of an inch. I've got some dark brown dubbing here that I'm going to use for the abdomen. But before I do that, I'm going to take a length of brassy gauge copper wire, tie that in on the side closest to me. That'll be our rib. So I've got this dark brown dubbing. It's got some rabbit and some brown antron and some sparkle dub. It's got some really long fibers in it, which especially for an emerging insect or one that's spent, it's starting to fall apart. I like these shaggy fibers quite a bit because it gives that a that impression of a less than perfect insect that's in transition. And then we'll wrap this dubbing forward. There'll be a slight taper on this abdomen. So it'll get thicker. As we move forward, I pulled a little too hard on my thread there. Broke it. which is never something you plan on, but it's good for you to see that you don't have to really worry about it. Just re-thread your bobbin. I'm gonna take my hackle pliers, grab this thread, undo it a wrap or two, tie back in with my bobbin, my scissors, trim that out, and then we'll just run our thread back. I'm just going to push this dubbing down, grab that thread, tie right over it. Trim it out, we're back in business. Good for you to see. usually don't plan on that, but it does happen. And I tend to try to push the limits of my thread as far as the tension goes. This is 8.0 Brown Uni, so it will break a little bit easier than a heavier thread. But I tend to tie with 8.0 unless I'm tying something really large. gives me the option, the flexibility to bulk up if I want, just a little bit more work or not. All right, so I'm gonna run that dark brown dubbing about two thirds of the way up the shank of the hook, and then we'll take our copper wire, and in even turns, we'll rib it forward to get about, oh, five or six turns on a fly this size. that copper wire and wrap over it. Like so. Helicopter that off. Alright, now I want to put a wing 
on this and I've got some short deer hair here this doesn't need to be top quality hair because we're not going to spin with it and we're not going to have a wing that's necessarily trying to keep the fly afloat like on a stimulator or something like that I do like to just run some velcro through the tips try to get out some of that under fur from the hair and I'll use my fingernails too and I've got a stacker here somewhere which I can't find so I'll use this one oh, it's over there but got this one no worries so we'll put our hair in the stacker a stack and it didn't stack particularly well let's try it again it's better all right so I like this wing to extend just past the bend of the hook and it's a moderate wing it's not too heavy again it's not really intended to float the fly I fish this pattern subsurface for the most part although if you put some floating on it it will serve as a dry and I just tie over this wing and then we'll trim out these butt ends like so pretty good and then I just like to tie over those tie those down we're gonna dub a head here in a moment if we put some legs on this guy so I just check that wing make sure it's where I want if I've got any ends I'm not happy with I'll trim those out and I've got a hen feather here I'm going to take a, one of these feathers from this cape, pull it off, we'll put a set of legs on this guy. I like these legs to be fairly long. So I'm using the butt end of uh, the feather rather than the tip because these fibers are naturally a bit longer. And I've just got a notch cut in that, and I'll set those, set that right on top of the shank of the hook, put a couple wraps of thread over it, and then those are longer than I want, so I'm just going to give this feather a slight pull. Looks good. I want these feathers to sit down a bit so I pinch them and push them down as I wrap over them and that will set them so they face downward and then I'll trim out the feather make sure I get any butt ends Again, I'll just tie over those. And for a head, I've got a cream synthetic dubbing that I've mixed. It's got some UV sparkle dub in there, not too much. Just a touch. And I do tie this in with a green head or a yellow head. I found this tan to be most productive. I've tried the pattern with a a dark body and a dark head and um, the fish don't seem to respond to it as well I think they like the contrast and this better mimics hydropsyche particular we well so I'm just gonna dub this head and then a couple wraps of thread right behind that bead now that's a pretty tight 
fit in there. So rather than try to squeeze a pin and some head cement after my whip finish, I'm going to put some head cement on the thread as I whip finish. And that'll do the job. Trim that out. I hope you enjoyed this. This is a great pattern. I catch so many fish with this pattern. Um, I hope it uh, ends up in your box and let me know how you do with it. Thanks for watching. Going to have some other videos, so I hope you check those out. Uh, this is a great little merger, and I'll catch you in another video. Bye.